When we look at the Nazca Lines, we are looking at ancient geoglyphs that can only be seen from the sky. It is an astonishing revelation that these glyphs were obviously meant to be seen from the sky, leading to an enormity of speculation regarding flight in the very distant past. Of course, it is told in the ancient text that flight in ancient times was a very real thing that was taking place. There are descriptions of vehicles in many cultures, but these vehicles are not present and have never been found despite the ancient records overwhelming suggestion that these people had these capabilities. One of the strangest and most striking features present at Nazca is that of the Waving Man. Who or what is this guy waving at? It does appear for whatever reason that Nazca was a place of mega importance. Whether that being a playground for the elite of the time or an airport for visitors to the earth, whatever purpose were at play here thousands of years ago, whatever it was, we can all agree in one thing. And that being that these things were designed to be seen from above. Wait till you hear this. The anomalies at Nazca were only found by modern people with the birth of aerodynamics in the 1920s. Before we took to the skies, we were completely unaware of these very anomalous features that tell us overwhelmingly that there is more to our story. And in fact, we are missing something of such importance that it sounds like we are exaggerating. Well, there is no exaggeration, guys. You can't deny these things are present here, and no other logical explanation is apparent when considering what this place actually is. The fact of the matter has to be that we are missing the bigger answer because there was a break between the ancient civilization and our current civilization that is dating back 5,000 years. This is one of the world mysteries that slots into the category of the unknown just like we see at our locations across the planet. It's stunning and only a game changer if you want it to be. If you were to consider what the Waving Man of Nazca is signaling, then no matter what conclusion you arrive at, it always tells us it's something in the sky. Something that can only be seen from the sky. It's crazy. These lines are over 2,000 years old and can only be fully appreciated when viewed from the air given their massive size. Despite being studied for over 80 years, the geoglyphs, which were designated by UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994, are still a mystery to researchers and alternative thinkers the world over. In 2011, a Japanese team discovered a new geoglyph that appears to represent a scene of decapitation, which, at about 4.2 meters long and 3.1 meters wide, is far smaller than other figures and not easily seen from aerial surveys. These people were known to collect trophy heads and research in 2009 revealed that a majority of the trophy skulls came from the same population as the people that were buried here. In 2016, the same team found another glyph, this time one that depicts a 98 foot long mythical creature that has many legs and spotted markings and is sticking out its tongue. And in 2018, Peruvian archaeologists announced that they had discovered more than 50 new geoglyphs in the region, using drone technology to map the landmarks in unprecedented detail. The Waving Man, also known as the Nazca Astronaut and known to archaeologists as the Owl Man, is an etched geoglyph in human form, approximately 100 feet high, measuring about the same length as a football field and situated between two etched parallel lines on a hill near the Nazca Plateau, such that it could be seen from the coast. The longtime scholar of the Nazca drawings, Maria Wright, named the figure the Owl Man when she published the first aerial photograph of it in her 1949 book, The Mystery, The Desert, which suggested an astronomical purpose for this and other Nazca etchings. It became known as the astronaut only after ancient astronaut writers popularized the image. For example, Erich von Daniken has suggested that this figure represents the beings who landed their craft thousands of years ago on these planes. He maintains that the whole area has been carefully designated as a marker to guide other worldly visitors back to Earth safely. This has fulfilled the question of the gods. For if we humans once seen things in the sky that we could not understand, then we would see that as godlike activity much like we see with the cargo cults of the 20th century. The study of the Waving Man at Nazca is almost non-existent. Close to nothing has ever been published about this stunning geoglyph, except for what ancient astronaut writers have written. Mainstream sources are content merely to refer to it as an anomalous etching created by ancient people and have even attributed it to religious impulses, perhaps depicting the oculate being. 
This has given certain thinkers an open invitation to write whatever they wish about the figure and its supposed resemblance to gray aliens. Consider the following. This thing huge and etched onto the side of a mountain facing the sea. Is it really possible that all this is for is to alert passing ships in the sea and not craft in the sky? Maybe he is signaling the sea people to come to Nazca for trade. Maybe, but then maybe not. We came across this theory on a blog post where the author even included a traced over drawing to highlight this guy. Looks like he has something like a sack over his shoulder and waving to grab passing attention. You must consider that this is as plausible a theory as any other theory proposed and could shed some light onto the apparent nature of the lines not being related to this guy. But of course, further study is needed and like we said earlier, none is being done. These lines were discovered in 1927 and are the most extraordinary legacy left by a culture that flourished over 2,000 years ago. These lines and other geoglyphs as a series of complex designs, some miles long, which can only be seen in their true dimensions from the sky, the pre-Columbian culture is not believed to have been capable of flight, but the question still remains as to how they crafted the drawings, what technology they used, and what purpose the lines served. The town of Nazca was founded in 1591 by the Spanish conquistadors of the Nazca Plateau, without any knowledge of what lay nearby. Today, a sleepy little town exists, slowly developing, where the main economic activity is based on tourism of the lines, agriculture, and trade. Since discovery in 1927, then exploration by American scientist Paul Kosak and German mathematician Maria Reich in 1939, and through the continuing efforts of Maria Reich for more than 50 years, the lines have remained a perplexing enigma of scholars. Originally thought to be the remains of irrigation lines beyond the verdant Nazca Valley, it wasn't until they were seen from the air that the lines were fully recognizable as the vast network of incredible artifacts that they are. Another less scientific hypothesis involves the work of David Johnson. Johnson has researched the Nazca lines and their apparent connection with underground waterways. Johnson allegedly used dowsing to track these water tunnels, claiming that the lines indicate whether the ground contains water or not. The areas with the most geoglyphs are purportedly centered around areas with high amounts of underground water and are usually close to wells and other on-land water sources. A suggestion Johnson makes is the fact that the inhabitants living in such a dry land would spend a significant portion of their time searching for water sources. By creating a giant full-scale map, they would know exactly where to find their water no matter what area of the desert they were in. The geoglyphs would then be religious figures for the gods or names given for each water source. That being said, the information should be taken with a lot of care since Johnson used the very unscientific method of dowsing to locate the purported watering holes. Another hypothesis contends that the lines are the remains of walking temples where a large group of worshippers walked along a preset pattern dedicated to a particular holy entity similar to the practice of labyrinth walking. Residents of the local village say the ancient Indians conducted rituals on these giant drawings to thank the gods to ensure the water would continue to flow from the Andes. This view correlates with the purposes of other North American geoglyphs. However, the emergence of ritual after the fact does not prove that ritual was the reason or the basis for the creation of the geoglyphs to begin with. To the contrary, it is common for practices to de-evolve over time from fact to mythology. Also, according to another fanciful recent hypothesis from Michael Valent, Conductors under the form of very slim gold or copper leaves would have been stretched on the ground. These conductors would have been used as antenna to collect the very low frequency magnetotelluric waves produced in certain seismographic areas, and that occurred a few hours or days before the signs. These hypotheses rely on controversial theory named as seismic electronic signals. However, there has never been any remnants of these antenna found. As far as the waving guy, well, we like to speculate that this was a culture either left behind or signaling for the return. The guy is a representation of people running with their belongings and waving to draw the attention of the operator of a vehicle in the sky. Seems he missed his flight. 
Whatever is going on at this place, whatever the reason is, and who created these things, we can surmise that the waving guy may not be what we think it is. It is more crude than the other features that are present, and this suggests that whatever created the Nazca Lines did not create the waving guy. But the people who created it oversaw the etching on the plateau, so had basic knowledge as to how to create this piece of ancient artwork. What do you guys think he is waving at? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.